Hello world, especially Cava, Halifax, and Plimpton. You know that spells Chip, C-H-P. Remember the TV show Chips? Anyway, um, I want you to have, wish me a happy birthday. I had a birthday last Friday, July 20th, and I'm 89 years old. Now somebody told me that the day after your birthday, now I'm in my 90th year. How about, that's good news, huh? No, it's not. I wish I was 20 years old again. You people out there that are young, like my cameraman here, good looking guy, enjoy every minute of this life because it goes by faster than you think. Hey, I've got a guest, I told you the last show I did, I'm gonna have a special guest on. All my guests are special. This one's special, special. Introduce you to her in just a minute. I, wanna, I was thinking the other night, I went to bed, and I'm thinking, geez, 89 years old. I've seen a lot. I'm almost a walking history book. You know, I've seen uh, World Wars. I've uh, lived through the Great Depression, uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Vietnam, Korea. Uh, uh, you know, there's so many things that I've seen. I'm a walking history book. And yet, you know, when you get together with, uh, with a group of younger people, and I'm talking 40, 50 years old, they almost ignore you because you're too old. I, uh, some guy said something to me the other day, and I said, look, I'm just old, not stupid. I haven't got to that point yet. I want to tell you very briefly, I was, when, when I first got out of the service, I was what they called an IBM operator. IBM stands for uh, International Business Machines. And they were the first computer. They were punch cards. And there was a machine. We had, we had 10,000 square feet to house the machines that I now carry in my pocket. And the only competition we had was Remington Rand. We were in competition with them. You could not buy an IBM machine. You had to rent it. You had to lease it. And because you leased it, they took care of it. If there was a problem with it, they sent a man out to fix it. That's the way that worked until the government clamped down on them and they had to sell the machines. So I just think, it, what, a, what a great, I'm glad I'm living through this era of technology with the cell phones and the incredible television and the, uh, the computers. You know, there's, there's nothing in the world that you can think of that you can't ask the computer and it'll have an answer for you. I just had to get that out of my system. I thought it was interesting to know that I'm now 89 years old. Thank you very much for wishing me a happy birthday. I know you're doing that. I appreciate your watching the show. I appreciate the comments I get from you. Thank you very much. You know, I only get good comments. Nobody tells me the bad things. I don't want to hear the bad things anyway. I want to thank Chris Gardner, the young guy who's standing back of the camera right now. Very talented, very good looking. I had a hair that I wish I had again. You know, he's just a gorgeous, gorgeous guy. It's, the life holds great things for him. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to my guest. We're going to talk. Don't go away. Pour yourself your favorite beverage. Take off your shoes. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Glad to be. Thank you for being out there. If it wasn't for you, there'd be no need for me. Don't put me out of a job. Stick where you are. And we'd like to hear from you every once in a while. You know, give us a note. Give us a call. 508-866-1019. You got a comment to make? How the show could be done better? How it could be done worse? How it could be done anyway? Give me a shot. Got a guest that you'd like to put on the air? I'm available. You want to come on the air? Give us a call. We'll put you on the air. You've got an interesting story to tell. Only one thing that I have to keep reminding you, this is a family show, and we don't want any thing that you wouldn't want your kids to hear. So uh, just bear that in mind. But other than that, the sky's the limit. You've got an interesting story to tell. We've got three guys. I want you to stand by for this one. Uh, we're trying to make the arrangements now. It's a little difficult. Three guys that were on Iwo Jima, during the Second World War, and they're gonna be on my show. They're in their 90s, 
and I understand they're, they're very coherent, they're very lucid, and they're most anxious to come on the show. They probably can't make it here, so we'll take our cameras there, wherever they are. And remember that. If you've got an interesting story to tell and you're a shut-in, we'll come to you. All right, enough of my palaver. I'm going to introduce you to my guest, who I am very lucky to have. Uh, our last show, we had the brand-new Joe Hickey from Kaba, uh, veterans agent. He was very, very good. He, was new, he knew his stuff, and he's on the veteran side. He's a veteran himself. So now I have a lady called, I got her here. I keep calling her Diane, and she gets very upset over that. Her name is Roxanne Whitbeck, and I'm going to introduce you right now. Hi, you, Roxanne. How are you doing? How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you so much for coming here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're a veterans agent. I am a veterans agent. In Plymouth. Yes, I am. a veterans agent. I've been doing it for about 10 years now. Uh, Navy veteran myself of 13 years. Are you a vet? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, okay. you can't But sense. before we get into any of that, okay. are you married? No. Not married? Nope. Children? Two. Two, Two boys, children. yep. Two boys? Yes. Yeah. One is deployed. Um, he is serving um, as a fleet marine. He's a Navy corpsman, and he's serving with the fleet marine, and he's currently deployed. And then my oldest is... Deployed where? Uh, he's in Italy right now. Italy, okay. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he'll be home in September, which will make his mother very happy oh, <laughs> when yeah. he's back on yeah. U.S. territory. How old is he? He is 25. Oh, what a great age. Yes. What a nice age. He's a great kid. And the other boy? He is uh, 32, and he lives on Nantucket. He's oh, been there for a, I know he's been there for a few years, and uh, he's doing very well out there. So I'm very proud of both of my boys. Oh, that's great. Are you a Plymouth girl? Are you born there? No, actually, I'm a Maine girl. Uh, Maine. I, yep. I left the uh, I left the great state of Maine when I was 19 and joined the Navy, and then I settled in Plymouth because it reminded me a lot of Maine. Did you see any action when you were in the Navy? No, I served during peacetime. I was very fortunate to serve yeah. during peacetime. Yeah. Can I, can I ask you what years you served? Uh, I served from 1980 to 1993. And what was your rate when you got out? An E7, a chief yeoman. Wow, you yeah. did well. I did very well for yeah. myself, thank you. I appreciate that. Do you, would you, did you, are you sorry you didn't make it a career? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, um, I was married at the time, and um, you know I was trying to think of everybody in my family and what oh, the yeah, best for yeah, them was. Yeah. And so I put my own aspirations to the side. but. Um, I can't regret it too much because it's brought me where I am today, and I love this job very, very much. Do you? Yes. Yeah, that's yes, good I to do. hear. Yes. Because I don't think you could do it if you didn't love it. You No. You shouldn't do it if you don't love it is the, not, the caveat. It, it's not something you do for the money because it's not, you know, it's, it's like being a school teacher. Right. You're a school teacher because you love teaching. Right. You're not doing it because you want to get rich. Right. No, yeah. it's the satisfaction of helping veterans every single day. And that, yeah. to me, is that's a that's just something that's been dear to my heart forever. So. What a great thing to say. Just, you know, I, my whole family, my kids especially, the, my kids are not veterans, um, but they will do anything for veterans. I don't think you have to be a veteran to appreciate a veteran. You no, know? you don't. No, you Absolutely don't. not. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to be appreciated, but I think uh, the way of, that our world is and our kids are serving multiple multiple tours overseas, and yeah. I mean, that, that takes a lot on them. Oh, you, you can say that again. You Absolutely. bet your life. You bet your life. Um, how did you come to Plymouth? I actually, when I got out of the service, I was uh, serving at NAS South Weymouth, which was still functional at the time. I remember that. Yep, and I, we just, you know, this is where we lived, um, and we just settled here, and I've been here for, oh my gosh, many, 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 many years now. In Plymouth, um, you yeah. lived in Plymouth. Yep. Yeah. You lived actually, longer than I lived in Maine, I've been in Plymouth, really? so, yeah. So you, you were just born in Maine. Yeah, you're transplanted really, to Massachusetts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's all right, it's okay. I love Maine. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful place. I do, too. Uh, why did you join the Navy? Is there, was there a particular reason for that? Well, I didn't really want to put the financial burden on my family for college, and I knew I couldn't just hang around in my hometown. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to try this and see how it works out. And I just planned to do a four-year stint, but um, I enjoyed it so much it stretched into 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. Uh, 
a long time. I'm sitting here saying, she did 13 years, why don't she do seven more? I know. Well, I want my kids to grow up in the same place, grow up with the same friends. You're always thinking of somebody else. I, you know what, I did, I did. But that's okay, because uh, that's okay. my kids, I'm super proud of my kids, and I couldn't have asked for better kids. And I think having the stability of a, a being in the same neighborhood with the same oh, yeah. friends and going yeah. to the same schools and not uprooting every few years had a lot to do with that. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I was in the Air Force during the uh, Korean thing, and uh, I got married while I was in the Air Force. I had trouble getting permission to get married. Yeah? In those days, you had to get permission from your CO. Isn't that crazy? Did you know that? No. Yeah. When, if you wanted to get married while you were in the service, you had to go to your CO. Well, actually, I think I did too now that you said that. You have to get permission to and get permission, and he yeah. he denied me the permission. Wow! And I said, "Sir, may I ask what your reasons are?" And he said, "You may not." And he said, "You are dismissed." Wow! Turned around, saluted, walked out, and about a week later, he called me back into his office. The CEO wants to see you immediately, and I went back in, and he said, "I'm sorry about the other day. Um, I was." Uh, Having a bad day. Uh, he said this in the vernacular of a service man. I won't repeat that on the air. But he said, I had a hair. Uh, I know. It. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm very sorry. You certainly have permission, my permission to get married. I said, okay. So we got married. And my wife came with me while I was stateside. God, and that's great. Uh, I said, you know, I think I'd like to make a career out of this. I'm, I'm enjoying it. By that time, I was a, a sergeant. Yep. Three stripes. And uh, she said, no, I want children. And I said, well, you, there's a lot of people here where I don't want my children all over the world, uprooted here, no friends, no classmates, no this. She said, no, I had all that, and they should have that too. So I did, I my, get it. I did my thing, and, and that was it. I get but it. to this day, I think the service is a good career, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it, to do it all over again, I don't think it, it hurts to bring children to different places. It just it just expands their horizons, and uh, you know, like I said, if I had known now what I knew, you know, what I didn't know then, then I think uh, you know, I definitely would have made a career of it. I if I I, I I couldn't say it any better. If I had it to do all over again, I would give my wife a big argument on that one because <laughs> having kids in the service it broadens them. Yeah, it certainly does. It makes them more cosmopolitan, I agree. if you will. I so. agree. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, I've got enough personal information from you, okay. except when can we have dinner? But that's later. That's later. That'd be after the cameras stop rolling. Uh, this segment is just about finished. You did a good job. Thank you. So we're going to sign off for a few minutes, and we'll come back. We're going to talk about what you do, why you do it, how you do it, and the reputation you have. This is the reason I got in touch with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank so you. this is all interesting stuff. It's all going to come to you when we come back. Take a little break right now. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And while the cameras have been off, I've been having a very interesting conversation with Roxanne, a veterans agent from Plymouth, and you are not privy to any of that conversation. <laughs> so we're going to get on with what she does as a veterans agent. Roxanne, what does a veteran, what, what's, what's the job description for a veterans agent? Well, I think Briefly. the job description is to help the veterans that are in your community, however means you can. In Massachusetts, we're very fortunate here to have um, a program called Chapter 115, which gives financial assistance to veterans that are 200% below the poverty level. So basically, it gives them, you know, maybe a reimbursement for prescriptions, their uh, Medicare, their Medi um, their Part B, D, um, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. That can all be reimbursed. So when you're on a, on a fixed income, that could be very helpful. Mm. Oh, so, yes, indeed. And yes. we can do glasses, we can do hearing aids, we can do pretty much anything, but it all has to be coded and processed properly. Um, my, I spend a lot of my time doing comps and pens, which you, we talked about earlier, getting compensation from the VA is very important because it's a lifetime benefit. 
Um, and if we can get them on a federal benefit as opposed to the state benefit, we're saving money for the town and the state. So that's what I do a lot is to try to get them off the state and put them on the federal. I, have you noticed, uh, those of you that are watching, I asked her a question, what is the job description of a veterans agent briefly? And she went on for 10 minutes about something else. <laughs> Which is great. Which is just great. You got That's a beautiful, what I do. beautiful smile. You know, you are curious about how I heard about you? Yes, I am. Very right. curious. And you said Joe Hickey. Joe Hickey, of course, knows you. Um, knows about you anyway. I don't know if you've ever met. Have oh you yeah, yeah. Okay. I know Joe very well. Uh, Ken Morrison. Oh, Ken. The of previous course. veterans agent. Yep. Uh, talked about you, and so I, I don't. When I'm going on the air with somebody, we don't have a big staff here, so I can't investigate your background whether or not you're honest, or do a RICO on you, or do any of that. So I kind of do a little investigation on my own. So I asked veterans agents around, have you ever heard of Roxanne? And my God, and, and veterans, and veterans. That's the important thing. I, I live in South Meadow Village here. Oh, we God, have a, a yes. big I, veterans comp. Yes, you do. And I said, have you ever heard of Roxanne? From, oh, my God, Roxanne, she's great. She's fantastic. I said, I got to see this. This lady, who you, I got to meet this rock. Is she for real? Yeah, yes, she for <laughs> real. And the few minutes we've been together, I must say, I'm very intrigued by you, you, you. and what you do. Um, so that's that's how I know Roxanne. Now, what what do you have exactly to do with Carver? I am the district manager, so to speak. Ah, and and uh, Joe and Mark run the office and if they have any questions or problems they can call me at any time um, I field any problems any issues uh, I do comps and pens in my office you know car for Carver people um, I do have a, a, a substantial following from Carver folks that I've met along the way you sure do yeah 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 do you have a staff uh, in Plymouth, I have a staff of one. In Carver, which is a much smaller town, there's a staff of two. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and in Plimpton, and in Plimpton, it's just me. But we get it done. Plimpton's very, very small. But um, so you're also the district manager for Plimpton. I'm the agent for Plimpton as well. Yep. You are the agent for. I am the Plimpton. agent, not the manager. I'm the district manager for for Carver. Okay. Yeah. So okay. very proud to have three towns under my tutelage. I'm yeah. super proud of that. Yeah. Why doesn't uh, Plimpton have its own uh, veterans agent? Because they they only have a population of about twenty nine hundred, and you need and it's only a part time agent. So I can do of that course. part time. Of course, yep. of course, yeah. And I love I love my folks in Plimpton. They're great. Oh, I love Plimpton. Yeah, Plimpton's wonderful. I love the town. And I love Halifax and Carver too. Don't get me wrong, but I was the agent in Ca in Halifax for a while as well. Were you really? Yep. Wow. And now Will Corey's the agent. How long have you been doing this? You told me once. Ten years. Ten years. Yep, I've been the agent in ten years for Plymouth. Um, when I first started, um, I was on my own with, with managing a, a, a fairly large Chapter 115, which is the state benefit that we had talked about. Yeah. Um, and I was lucky enough to be recognized by the state um, as as uh, they picked me as Veteran Service Officer of the Year within my first six months to a year of being in the job. Isn't that great? That was wonderful. Yeah. It was just such an honor to me because it, yeah, that I would was, be an honor to anybody. Yeah, because when you take over that job, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, and I, I don't know if I have what it takes, but that to me built up my confidence and kind of set the set the course for how my career has gone since then. Well, your confidence should not wane because <laughs> your self-esteem should be way up here because everybody I talk any anybody I talk to, veterans, veterans agents, someplace else, Roxanne is almost like a mag magic name. I can hear it now. Roxanne, Roxanne. Isn't that nice? It's that's great. super nice. It's great. And it's trust great. me, that's not anything I would ever take lightly no. or take that for granted because I work very, very hard to maintain the reputation that I've built over the years. But being a veterans agent and being as popular as you are, that's a heavy burden. Not to me. No? No. Because, you know, you don't want to make a mistake. Well, we all make mistakes. We're human. Yeah. And hopefully our veterans, when that mistake does happen, hopefully our veterans can understand that. And when you're just one person and everybody, you know, wants, everybody wants, that when they come into our office, it's not they're seeing if you're having a nice day. They have a problem. And you, you address the problems like they were your own. If, if someone comes into my office and is sitting in the seat across from me, I'm treating them the way I want to be treated if I'm walking in that office. Do they have, uh, do they have the, the time they need 
to explain their, Absolutely. their problem? Absolutely. I mean, and if not, then I would have my secretary or my assistant call and say, okay, she's wrapped up in this problem. Can you come in a half hour later if I have a next appointment? I always schedule appointments. We do have walk-ins, which we will take on a case-by-case, -case, but I always schedule appointments so people have the time that they need for whatever we're doing. Do you get a lot of female veterans? Um, a fair majority. Most of the time right now, the people that I'm seeing are the Vietnam veterans because they're coming into their retirement age and um, a lot of them have, you know, PTSD issues or Agent Orange issues that they kind of just push back while they were working and now they're retired so that it's all coming to the forefront and they have time to address the issues. Yeah. So a lot of the Vietnam veterans we're seeing. I just got in my issue yesterday of DAV, the magazine they put out, and in there it says that Veterans now, instead of going to a nursing home or any, the, the VA prefers them to stay home. Right. And they're willing to pay. Aid and attendance. A dependent. No, aid and attendance is the program to keep the veteran in his home. Yeah. It's an extra stipend from the VA that the veteran can hire somebody to come in and do that home care for them. Oh, the veteran gets the money? Yes and can pay whomever he wants to for the health care or the It doesn't the have to care. be a member of the family? No. It's who the veteran It could be chooses. anybody. Anybody. But there are stipulations. There the There's assets financial, and income. That's right. Income and assets. Yeah, right. Okay. Can't have more than $80,000 in assets, which doesn't include a home or a car. And the, the financial part, the, um, the income car part, can be spent down with the cost of medical expenses. Okay. So say somebody's in an assisted living and it's costing 5000 a month and they only make Nineteen hundred dollars on Social Security. They're already they've already spent down their money. Okay. There's a is there not in Brockton VA the Brockton campus? Do they not have a place where veterans can go if they're down and out and terminal? I think so. I think they do. Yeah. Yep. And I know that we have soldiers' uh, homes in Chelsea and Holyoke, and I'm not sure what the waiting time is to get in there. And if someone's 100% service connected for their disability they can use a VA-approved um, nursing home that's in the community. Oh, okay. And we all should have lists of, of what's in our community of what VA-approved um, nursing homes will accept that. A veteran's spouse, do they have m medical rights? Do they, they don't have medical rights, but they would have the aid and attendance right that we talked about. The only ones that have the medical rights would be the one, ones of 100% uh, service connected. And they'd okay. be uh, entitled to what they call CHAMP VA if the veteran didn't retire from the military. If you retired from the military, they would have TRICARE or TRICARE for life. All right, here's a, here's a question that really doesn't make any difference. But I heard some time ago where they're trying to pass a bill where all veterans, not just retired veterans, but all veterans can get PX privileges and commissary. That would be great. Privileges. I would love that. I would too. Is that? Have you heard anything about that? Well, actually, there was something about uh, you could sign up online for that, but I haven't really followed it very closely, and I'm not sure where okay. where it lands right now. But six months ago, I saw it was in I front of the Congress. Was, yes, exactly. And they were going to pass the bill. Yep. And they said it was a shoe in. Right. And I haven't, I haven't heard, heard much about it. Yeah. Any I'll check into it. that. Yeah. Because that would be great. We don't have anything here in Plymouth or this area, but Newport. Uh, the Cape has, I think, a small... Doesn't Otis... Uh, yeah, stick? the Cape, yep. They have a small uh, commissary or yeah. whatever you want to call it. But Newport's probably the, the more, I don't know, the bigger one, I'm guessing, is... Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. I would just... It would, you know, when I go to the... I, I got an appointment uh, August 6th. Uh, I'm a diabetic, and I go to Brockton. And when you go there, all, when, you, when you go in those doors... It's like you're back in the service. Yeah. yeah you know, it's, it's just like you're back in the service. <laughs> it's not like a hospital around, you know, going to a hospital, it's professional and this and that. It's buddy-buddy time. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Question. In Plymouth, there's now a VA... Clinic. Clinic. Yes. I go to the clinic in Brockton. Mm -hmm. I could go to the one in Plymouth, could you I not? You certainly can. Yep. And uh, the, it's a clinic, obviously, so they're doing physicals and things like that. You can get your blood drawn in the area. Um, they do telemed, with, you know, you can talk to your doctor via the television. So they are, are, they are very state-of-the-art, I think, and um, they can do ID cards there as well. So they are very good there. You can do blood work there? 
they it, it sent out like right it's right in that area but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right so my august 6th appointment i got to have blood work done the week before can i have it done here instead of going all the way to brockton you can i can give you contact information and we could find that out for you yeah yeah absolutely i'll that find would, that out for that you it would be great if i could do it here i know but, right but i lived in randolph all my life and when i go to brockton it's only six miles from randolph i go there my wife is buried there and that wow. kind of thing so yeah. So you, in, what was the next step for you? What, what, you were now a veterans agent in Plymouth and district manager for the town of Carver, part-time in Plympton. What's the next step for you? Is there a step up or is this it? No, I think this is it for me. I, I found really uh, my calling. I found my passion and I'm happy with what I'm doing. And I think I make a lot of people happy and I think I can change their lives. So I don't think there's any place to go from there for me. Well, I, I, I've got a message uh, for you veterans out there. Um, I know some of you are shy about going in and asking certain things. You shouldn't be. You've earned it. Absolutely. You've earned it. And somebody like this can help you and make it pleasant, you know? <laughs> how, how can you ask for any more than that? Absolutely. I don't see how you can get any better than what we've got here. and. Joe Hickey, who I just met, is a hell of a nice guy. Ken Morrison was a very nice guy. I had a veterans agent in Randolph when I lived there. His name was Jimmy Hurley. He had only one leg. Uh, the, he was a DAV. And he couldn't have been nicer. He would he'd go out nights in a storm to help a vet. And these people are devoted. These, these people are committed to what they're doing. They love what they're doing. They love veterans. She's a veteran. Joe's a veteran. I'm a veteran. Everybody's a veteran. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. No. Nope. Come and see them. It's I, never a handout. It's always a hand up. Yes. God, that's a great thing to say. I'm glad you said that. Absolutely. Roxanne, I can't thank you enough. Oh, for it's being my pleasure. Here. I want to ask you on the air if in the future, maybe six months from now, we might have a follow up. Absolutely, I'd be come happy back to. on the air with me. And I would love to. If I'm still around. Well, let's hope. <laughs> well, let's hope. And, uh, and, and just shoot the ball Absolutely. about veterans and what they, and meanwhile, if you've got anything coming up, a veterans thing or that you'd like to have covered by TV, appreciate you've got that. PAC TV yep. in, in Plymouth, but we'd be more than happy to cover anything appreciate for veterans. Thank, Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having appreciate me. It. Okay, that's it. I brought you guests over the years that you should be proud of. I know I am. I hope you enjoyed talking to this young lady as much as I enjoyed having her here on my show. She's a delight. If you got a problem, go see her, go see Joe Hickey, go see wherever you're living because I know this is on YouTube and it's on the net, probably getting this out in California. Go to your veterans agent. You've earned it. You've earned it. They promised that to you when you enlisted. I remember they did to me. Promised me medical care for the rest of my life when I enlisted. So, without further ado, and I'm not going to talk anymore, I want you to come back and watch the show because I'm not going anywhere. That's the end of this show. It's the beginning of another one. Until then, until we meet again, I'm Ken Simmons for Area 58 Community Access Media saying, keep a song in your heart. God bless you and goodbye.